the hardest working guy in graffiti. Put everything on me because I guess they knew I was a troublemaker. Miami, which in recent years has become the street art and graffiti mecca. And we're going to check out and meet with Chrome, the most famous graffiti artist in all of Miami. We're going to watch him paint, check out his artwork, and get a bite to eat with him. Extra good. To properly introduce Chrome and how infamous he is, we need to tell you the backstory. Here it goes. In 1999, Chrome and his friend Crook were notorious for tagging throughout Miami, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. The huge graffiti wall they painted near I-95 on Northwest 24th Street in Wynwood got lots of police and media attention. The police rushed the apartment they were living at and arrested Crook and in an attempt to make an example of him, asked for a $1 million bond. Chrome saw the news and took off, but eventually turned himself in. Both Crook and Chrome ended up getting a $50,000 bond, which at the time was the biggest bond amount ever issued for vandalism. They both ended up doing time in prison for other charges while fighting the case. The prosecutor ended up offering them two to three years in prison, $50,000 in restitution, but both Chrome and Crook never admitted to anything and said, no way, not guilty, because they knew that their arrests were made after an illegal search of their apartment without a warrant. They ended up beating the case on the effect of illegal search. Case dismissed. Before we meet Chrome and watch him paint, we're gonna visit one of the last authentically Miami spots left in the Wynwood neighborhood, which has become really gentrified in the past decade. Henry Kata's on Northeast 29th Street by Northeast 2nd Avenue in the Wynwood area of Miami is a long-standing Cuban cafeteria. Jose Luis Pla bought the restaurant from the Suarez family in 2001. Although he just recently passed away, his two daughters are continuing the great Cuban cafeteria. We're going to go and check it out and we're going to get something to go. Mikaitis has been in business since the 1960s and specializes in breakfast food and sandwiches, including what has been described as the best pan con bistec, aka steak sandwich, in Miami. My marido, marido papaya, yes. <laughs> While our papaya batino is being prepared, we're going to check out the interior of this Cuban cafeteria. The late owner, Jose Luis Pla, refused to give in to developers who wanted to purchase the sandwich shop to make way for more towering condos that have now surrounded the shop on all three sides. Pla himself was always an advocate for the homeless and often fed the homeless around the restaurant and even employed them. At Enriqueta's, we got the papaya batido. Let me show you. Ooh, nice and frothy. So let's give it a try. And that's otherwise known as papaya milkshake. Mmm, so good. Like a cream cigar. Extra good. told us that he likes to incorporate a character into his piece because he feels like he's creating a mural within his own name and that the symbolism of a face is always good to use inside a piece so that people are more attracted to it and can remember it more easily. Hey guys, we're in Miami and we're with Chrome, the world famous graffiti artist, the hardest working guy in graffiti. <laughs> from the 90s when we were shooting our Miami graffiti book. Hey. 
We asked Chrome to explain how he got his name or tech. So when breaking was big, you know, I'm older, so when breaking was big in the 85 and shit, that's when I first like opened my eyes to graffiti, beat street style, it was mainly beat street, it was on TV and shit. And Electric Boogaloo and the breakdance movies had some graffiti and stuff. And then uh, I came up with Chrome when um, I had seen Chrome Angels, shout out to Moti and all them guys. And Chrome Angels, I thought, damn, Chrome, that's good, without the H though. And plus we have Chrome Detention Center down here for the immigrants out there one time. Oh yeah, with a K. <laughs> with a K. And I'll do it with a K sometimes, I'll do it with a Q. I'll do it however. But um, yeah, Chrome and also Crozé Rosé, my alter ego, like Crozé, but that's how I came up with Chrome pretty much. And the Chrome plate in my head, that's the one who was my bag. I had to put three Chrome plates in my head. Chrome spoke with us about the inspiration for a mural he did during Art Basel 2018. Belief in the night piece, anyhow. Uh, so we're painting in Wynwood during Basel last year. And I get out of prison <clears throat> and I'm painting these walls and I got these girls coming up to me asking about Alec Monopoly and I'm like, what the fuck is Alec Monopoly? What the fuck are they talking about? And they're like, it's that Monopoly guy, you know the guy who does Monopoly? I'm like, no man, I'm like, I've, yeah I've seen the shit but I didn't know who the fuck it was. So, so I started seeing the shit and I saw the one by Kush on 20th and uh, North Miami Avenue. And he's the, uh, the umbrella guy coming down and stuff. And it just is the him, uh, the, the Monopoly man coming down on an umbrella. So anyhow, I saw it and I'm like, man, it'd be pretty cool if I cut the, the old white guy on Monopoly, cut his leg off, and just had the blood squirting out saying chrome. Now he had done this, I don't know when, maybe a year ago, two years ago. Um, it's been riding. So I was like, man, I'll do it. But I'm not trying to really disrespect no one's shit. I don't know the guy, but it's like, I like to leave people shit the way it is. But I said, then that'd be pretty cool. He'd probably like it if, if, what, if I messed with it. So I told my other friend, Das, that's, that's X. And I told him about it, he's like looking at it, he's like, no man, he's like, don't cut his leg off. Let's just rob the motherfucker. I said, damn, that's a good idea. So then that's when we came with the idea to fucking poke the bag and said, so we stopped with what we were doing on the other wall. Went home, I drew it up, and then we went out to the wall that night and uh, set up the whole thing. And it was just that night, and uh, it was already there, and we had to brought a ladder, and we popped the bag, and we were there for about six hours and stuff, but um, yeah, the character was just all just by, you know, by, by uh, just form, you know, natural. Do that collaboration with Alec Monopoly, but forced collaboration, because he didn't actually do it with me. I'm like, okay, he's like, oh, he's too special for that, he's in my hood all the time, but He's too special to hit me up, like, or like, meet up and, uh, you know, rap or whatever. So I just took it like, okay, well, he's here painting and never hits me up, and I'm, I'm fucking cool. So I went ahead and did a little this fucking Alec Monopoly print slash whatever, you know, chance to pay your dudes in the 305 because, you know, out of respect and shit, you come and check, out, check me out and shit. So anyhow, I did uh, Alec Monopoly's head with the Monopoly, with me as Monopoly man running away with it with his hand over his face. And uh, we got prints of that limited edition prints. We got limited edition prints of the Thief in the Night Wall. Um, I don't know what it, you know, the, the website, chromeface.com. We also spoke with Chrome about how much Wynwood has changed since he started painting in the neighborhood in the 1990s when it was full of vacant warehouses, factories, and other neglected buildings. We definitely remember it that way, right Jimmy? Sure do. So now you have all this paint in Wynwood now. They have all this paint, all this, all the shit that we wanted a long time ago. We never thought Miami would be so, so hot like it is now. We, I've been painting this neighborhood. I'm not saying I set it off, but I kind of did with me and my crew. Miami style guys. Uh, I had lived on 26 and Biscayne, and we just started all painting Winwood and shit. And this is when like that used to be that whole back of that building right there used to be our whole productions. We had like two or three productions, and that's when it used to be the auto body place. Now it's just closed down. Someone probably bought the property. You know the value of property went up so much. So we used to paint all up and down the train tracks. Cops would stop us. They thought we were junkies and shit. Asked to see our arms and shit. We were young kids. But you know, all up down the train tracks, and then everyone else started, you know, when you see graffiti, then everyone else started just painting up down tracks, getting legals around here, doing legal stuff. And then Basel came to South Beach, and then God bless the day, Evils, and you guys, and us, we all did that stuff, and um, 
While Chrome finishes painting his piece, we're gonna visit the thief in the night mural he painted so you can see how big it really is. Yeah, it's huge. Who so I'll go after next? You could be the next victim. <laughs> Whatever artist is watching this, Whatever. I'm gonna start doing plastic surgery on, on you guys' pieces that I feel like it. <laughs> you can see it coming. Hey, you do. is located on North Miami Avenue at Northwest 20th Street. This gastropub, known for its locally sourced burgers and craft beer, was opened in 2014 by Matt Kusher. They're seating outdoors and inside. By the time we got to Kush, it was late at night, and although we couldn't get a table outdoors, we secured one inside. had their delicious burgers. All of their beef is locally sourced from Fort McCoy Ranch in Marion County, Florida, where the cattle are free range. Their burgers are ground in-house, fresh every day by hand, and served with your choice of french fries or sweet potato fries or veggies. Their chicken and waffles, which Chrome ordered, were voted best in Miami and come topped with chopped bacon and powdered sugar and served with their homemade maple syrup. What a great day we had in Wynwood, Miami, checking out some graffiti and street art and spending time with Chrome and having some great food. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and notification bell and give it a thumbs up and share our video if you liked it. You may also enjoy watching our other Miami videos, including our street food tour and our Miami food and graffiti tour with the graffiti artist Atomic. So hit that bell to be notified. Bye guys. Bye guys. Wait, we have a bonus clip of Chrome talking about the events that led to the tragic loss of his friend and Miami graffiti artist Bino, who was killed by the Miami Metro Mover, a free mass transit automated people mover train system. Right. I tried to do the night before without Bino, but uh, that night he's back in, uh, he's begging me, come on, cut a sticker out on the vinyl, I had a vinyl cutter machine for my dad's son. Come on, you guys, it's for the Marlins 97, they were gonna go to the championship and win and shit, but. Yeah, most of the, the thing with Bino is uh, he was hard-headed and he'd always push himself. He'd be like, come on, man, you're gonna do, you gotta let me. I'm like, no, nah, man, we just happened to be talking about faith that night, too. And then the story all, you know, right. the story goes as, you know, like, I, like, like it did, so. But, yeah, our best bet is probably, we'd have to tell this whole story probably more by, like, right. because people ain't gonna really picture the thing and then they can look it up and probably see that. Right, they have to see that, yeah. yeah. Because, right. <clears throat> They got to visualize the train, where we're at, what we're but doing. It's like a remote control train, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, and then he had his hand up there and he got hit. But right, right, you can't stop it because there's no one yeah. driving it. And, uh, and uh, Seth, which was the tagged heroes, he went the night before and the tracks were off. This night they were on. Right. And
And then uh, Bino was like the older guy, so he kind of like, he didn't want to question him, but he's like, yo, man, the, the, the Transformers are on, man. This shit's buzzing and shit. He's like, man, it's straight, it's straight. That's how Bruno was, just go ahead first. And uh, he's straight, he's straight, and, and he was just like, man, I don't know. So like, you start walking, and they got a little security thing in the middle and shit. Dude. Then they're up there, and you gotta reach over upside down and put the sticker on the, the underside of it. So he's putting, he's putting on Bino, Heroes Chrome, or whatever, and we put Go Marlins right now. And uh, he's reaching over, and you gotta reach over, but he's doing right. They park a Metro move right in the middle at nighttime, so I guess it starts in the morning. So he's standing in the middle in this, this safety net, uh, Nero says, and he touches the train. He's like, yo, this fucking train's on. Like, you feel the engine on it. And Vino's like, it's straight, it's straight. So put the tires right here, you gotta reach over. So the tires, like, right fucking next to you on the concrete bands and shit. Like that. And uh, so he's reaching over, and all of a sudden, Nero sees the train in the distance. Like, yo, the train's moving up. No, it's straight, it's straight. That's what's up, you know what? No, it's, it's fine, it's fine. He's like, man, I don't know, man. There's a train moving, man. This shit's. Sure enough, it just popped on and it hit him, you know what I'm saying? And, he, and then I, I was supposed to pick them up with his car because I was on probation. But, um, but uh, I was supposed to pick them up with my car, but I went back to the apartment to wait for them for about an hour. I said, I'll give you all an hour. And I happened to fall asleep. And I hear a knock on the door and I open up. It's a detective with, with heroes, but with his shirt off. And I'm like, oh, shit, these guys must have got caught. And then I lay down in bed and I'm listening to the radio. And it says, oh, gory accident, da-da-da, on... This game by Miami Herald. I'm like, oh shit, it must have been an accident. These guys got caught in time. And then I thought to the back of my mind, like, that was kind of weird how you came with the cop. And I asked, I asked the cop, like, what happened, man? He's like, where's, where's Jason's keys? Jason Fino was Bino. B E N O, the famous Bino. MSG AM7. So yeah, so so they were asking for Jason Fleener's um, keys. I'm like, I don't have them. He's like, come on, man, give me the fucking keys. Because I thought they, you know, it was maybe like cops playing games or something. So I gave him the keys and shit. And then later on, the detective came knocking on my door and told me what happened. So I just jotted down the story and shit. But yeah, then he died for uh, That was right before the 97 uh, Marlins World Series. And Marlins, of course, ended up winning. And, and then we're not no big baseball fans because if you're from Miami, you already know. Like, we're about football. Anyhow, <clears throat> it's just so because we were just using it for a tool to catch fame and catch uh, people to know us and shit. Uh, it's all in fun and shit, but um, they ended up putting Bino up on the, the, the what's that called? The Silicon? Oh, that billboard the big thing. Big TV, whatever. whatever. Jumbotron. Jumbotron. Yeah. Jumbotron. They put like his name and they put rest in peace to the best Marlins fan. You know what I mean? So that was good. You know, but. It's unfortunate, yeah, he was good people, man. Time for his family. Sorry for his family and his loved ones and all that, man. It's unfortunate shit, man.